In the previous lesson, we talked about the basics of forms in Bootstrap and saw the available controls, how you can size them and their behavior. Let's dig a little deeper and see how we can extend these forms. Bootstrap offers pretty much anything you want in terms of form styling, but there are a few components that will really help you create some awesome looking forms. For example, you can add text or buttons before and after a text-based input. Just a small note here, selects are currently not supported, so only use a text-based input. And you can do that really easy. Here we have a simple input and I want to append or prepend actually uh, like the dollar sign or any kind of text. So we'll start with this a div with a class of input prepend and I'm going to move the input inside it and right before it I'll create a span with a class of add-on which contains our text. So in my case, I'll just put like the uh, email sign. So right now, as you can see, this has been added and it can be any kind of text you want, like enter email here. Okay, you can create like labels without actually using the label markup. If you wanna add the text after the input, you just change the class, input append instead of prepend, and move the span. And right now it's on the right side. You can even have combinations. You can add a text before and after. So use both classes, input prepend and input append, and then just duplicate the add-on something like this and you have both on the left side and the right side now you can also prepend or append buttons for example instead of the add-on class right here you can use a simple button button with a class of btn and just say search and now you have a button you can also have multiple buttons. Simply add the buttons in order. Like this. And Bootstrap will take care of the styling for you. If you're looking for some common forms like search forms or inline forms, Bootstrap comes to aid with three predefined form layouts. The first one is a search form, which has an extra rounded text input and an inline search button. So for example, I have this form right here, which has an input and a button, and it's perfect for a search form. Simply add the class of form search to the, to the parent form element, and then the class of search query to the text input. Okay, so now the search query added uh, the round corners and the form search class made everything in line. If you're looking for a more compact layout, then you can use the inline form. Uh, for example, this form in the middle is like a typical sign-in form that you find on most websites. And it would really be useful to have all the controls on the same line. Well, you can do that easily by adding the class oops, of form inline. All right, so as you can see, the labels will be left aligned and all the controls will be inline blocks. The third layout introduces a few more classes. It's called the horizontal form layout and it's accessible by adding the form horizontal class. Let me just show you this real quick. 
I'm going to duplicate this form so you can see the differences. And I'll start by changing the class name to form horizontal. Now you won't notice much change here uh, because we need to make some more markup changes. From all the three layouts, this requires the most markup changes compared to a default form. So all the controls must be grouped together in a container with a class of control group. So we're going to do this div control group. Uh, if we have labels, then we must name them control label. So I'm just going to demonstrate one real quick for you. I'm going to do a label with a class of control label. All right, now we, I'm just going to create a very simple markup. Normally, when you use forms, make sure you give the inputs IDs and names, and then the labels should point to that particular ID or name. But in this case, it's just for demo. So I'll just say email. All right. And then another control group, which contains the password. All right. So now we're starting to see a couple of things. Now, uh, each input should be wrapped in a div with a class of controls. All right, and that will make sure that it's properly spaced from its label. So let's do that here as well. Okay, pretty good. Uh, last, we have this label with the class of checkbox and the button. So I'm gonna say div class control group. We're gonna wrap both of these. And then the label, uh, the label class checkbox in radio don't need the additional control label class. Instead, since the label here kind of is the same with the uh, with the input, we're going to wrap them in another div with a class of controls like this. Clean up a bit. And that's about it. Uh, these control classes and control groups make sure that all the controls are properly aligned and the labels are aligned to the right. And that's basically it for the third form layout. Really simple. So far, we've covered the base CSS, but Bootstrap provides a lot of dynamic components for navigation, alerts, buttons, and more. Let's have a closer look at these components, starting with dropdowns.